right. Anyone else? Go ahead, right there. So should we do this in some sort of order? <laughs> Ellie, why don't you go first? We'll go down the row and, and try to keep track of making it fair in some way. First of all, I think that too many kids uh, in our secondary schools in the state of Maine still are not nearly as familiar as we all are with the economic value of education and training beyond high school. I mean, it just, you know, we, we sit here and we look at these we all look at these bar charts and we say, oh, well, that, that's obviously right. You know, that obviously makes sense. I, th I think too many kids in our schools don't know that, just don't know it. And secondly, and in, in part it's related to that, uh, as I said earlier, I think too many kids in Maine public schools are not being adequately prepared to go beyond high school. They're simply not. When you have 47% of entering students in the community colleges systems needing remedial courses, and 22% of the kids entering our universities needing remedial courses, something is going awry. When you have kids dropping out of schools at the rates we see in places like Waterville, uh, when you have kids not graduating at the rates we see all over the state of Maine, something is wrong. And I don't see any prospect of moving kids into training and into higher education until we are reaching out and involving them and holding them in our public schools Thank and making you. sure they understand the value of it. Thank you, Elliot. Paula Page. Could you repeat the question? It's so long. <laughs> Adults, you mean the high school kids now? No. Adults. Adults, Adults. Okay, that's what I thought it was. Uh, I think there's three reasons. Number one is that too many of our people in Maine earn about 80% of the national average in per capita income. And what happens, they work in sometimes two and three jobs just to stay ahead. Number two, time. If you have a family, it's a full-time chore, particularly women, childbearing age. It's a full-time jo job if you're a single mom to work two jobs and raise your family. Going back to school is very critical. And I don't think that the, I think we need to bring back vocational and technical education into our system. Because a lot of times you look at some of the curriculums that are offered and it doesn't meet their needs. Would you like to repeat the question, Libby, or? I think it's about why so many adults are not in higher education. First of all, many of those adults are products of an older economy in Maine where you could get by with just a high school education. That is no longer the case. I think aspirations have sometimes been a little low in Maine because we didn't know that it was so important to get degrees beyond high school to earn more money. I think that that's absolutely right, the connection between your earning power. And the absolute difficulty of managing your life working, and I think I would like to commend both the university and the community colleges for trying to change their course load so that adults can go back to school and uh, in nighttime so that they don't have to give up their day job. They can't afford to go back to school without that. So I think aspirational barriers, I think work problems, child care, all the other issues that faces an adult. So I think as state policymakers, we need to make it as easy as possible to meet alternative ways of getting an education beyond high school. Sean? I promised myself I wasn't gonna talk about K through 12 because I know this is all about higher education, but I'm sorry, I held off as long as I could. <laughs> the, the dropout rate in Maine has been brought up. And think about that, really. You know, 20%, 25%. 
those young people drop out of school and it causes a great, cast that out over a couple of generations and think of the impact. Now they become parents, now their kids are in the classroom. And, and when you think about the dynamics of what it costs society, I think it was in the report, it's a million dollar asset. You typically earn a million dollars more with a degree than someone that doesn't have a degree over the course of your lifetime. Well, it costs $277,000 to society over a lifetime if you don't make it through high school. So you talk about the negative impact that that can have. So how supportive can parents be as adults to, as someone spoke here earlier, how to navigate their children through the college you know, application process. It's just intimidating and overwhelming to parents that haven't experienced education to that level. Go yeah, ahead, thanks. Kevin. Yeah, I met a young man in Farmington earlier who was bored with his senior year, so he left and got his GED, and he's been, a, he's been accepted at the University of Maine Farmington. He's studying there now, so he's doing quite well. And that's a problem in our school systems. Our curriculums are not working for our children. <laughs> I believe that uh, the culture that families are brought up in uh, is a big piece of that. There's the, the, the lack of maybe a college-educated parent or something of that nature, or just even not a move in that direction. I think also the perceived barriers. There are many folks who are just intimidated and afraid to reach out there and look at college as an option because it's, it's not in their, their family upbringing, or, or maybe they're intimidated and don't want to run for governor as an independent. But the reality is, thank you for that laugh. The reality is uh, we can do some things here, and it's the kind of partnering and, and looking at the numbers. Once we dissect those numbers and understand, then we can work towards cultivating an environment where we know, as the white paper said, they want to go after and look at getting these adults back into school. Why aren't they going? We need that data. And so nine months running for governor is not equivalent to all the years that these folks had. And I'm glad Libby brought up all the good experience and agenda in this room. And I'd work closely with you folks. Okay. 